Hello, my name is Mr C and welcome to our third lesson in our Scratch programming series. Today, this is an example of what we're going to have a go at doing. That's right, because today we're going to use inputs and loops, so repeat blocks, to make some music. Actually, professional music sometimes is made using repeat blocks, which we've already used, where certain things happen in order and then those things are repeated over and over again. If you've ever played around with GarageBand and other programs like this, then we can create loops of instruments, especially drums, uh, and then they repeat over and over again to form a backing of our music. That's what we're going to do today. And then over the top, the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to have a load of buttons, a load of inputs, which we're then going to program so when I press those inputs, a particular sound happens. Now, let's have a look at some of the blocks of code that I have used to create my special music machine. Here's the first block of code which we're going to have a look at. Oh, So it says, when I press the up arrow, set the pitch effect. So when I press the up arrow, set the pitch effect to 100. Now pitch is how high or how low a sound is. It's the frequency. So I'm guessing if I set the pitch effect to a, a higher uh, number, then it's going to be a higher pitch. And if I set the pitch effect to a lower number, it's going to be a lower pitch. So if I want a higher sound, a higher squeak, or a higher drum sound, then I'll set the pitch effect higher. And if I want a lower one, then I'll set the pitch effect to a lower number. Okay. Um, then it says set volume to 25%. So that's clearly sometimes we want to make sure that the musical instruments that we're playing or the sounds we're playing don't overpower each other. So clearly this sound... I'm setting to a quarter of its original volume so it doesn't overpower everything else. And then it says start sound meow. So this is obviously the trigger for that sound starting. So when I, there's a whole bunch of things going on when I press the up arrow. It's changing the pitch, it's set, sorry, setting the pitch, it's setting the volume, and then it's playing the sound. And you know, I've got meow playing, but you could choose different things depending on what sprite you've selected. And I'll also show you in this video how you can select some different sounds from the uh, Scratch library. Let's have a look at my, um, my drum loop. So this was the drum beats that were going on in the background. So it starts off in the same way. I've got a when input, so when I press the space bar, then it's starting this repeat block. So all this is going to happen... 50 times over. It's going to keep going 50 times over. So it's going to start this sound, so play this sound, wait 0.3 seconds, play another sound, the hi-hat, then wait 0.3 seconds again, then it's going to go back to the beginning of that again because it's a repeat block. Start that sound again, wait 0.3 seconds, start that sound again, wait 0.3 seconds, start that sound again, wait 0.3 seconds, play that sound again, wait so it's going to keep doing that 50 times and that's how I create uh, a drum uh, a drum loop so I'm going to play a sound but then I also need to wait a certain amount otherwise all of those things would be happening one after another it would sound like a woodpecker or a pneumatic drill so I want to play a sound you can play around with how uh, how long sounds right um, of course you could put 0 0.5 seconds which is half a second now you in year three might be more familiar with thinking, oh, well, what about one second? But one second's quite a long time, actually, in terms of music to be waiting. So that's why I've done to 0 0.3 to make it quite upbeat as well. But you can play around with that and see what numbers you want to put in. Let's have a look at those and how I made those in Scratch. Hello, so the first thing I'm going to do, now I'm in Scratch, is all of this is triggered when I press uh, a button, when I press an event. 
So these events, here, here is the events, okay. Now I could have these things happening just when I press the green flag, okay, when the program starts. But I, I'm gonna use um, my keypad. I quite like that control. So when I press space bar, that's, that's going to start uh, something. And I'm also going to have something else that says when I press the up arrow key. Now let's do this up arrow key first. This is gonna be my meows, okay. So when I press the up arrow key, um, I could just start off simple and play uh, a sound. So I'd like to play, um, I'm gonna choose start a sound, okay. Uh, if I play until done, it'll do all of that, play the whole of that uh, piece of sound, that sound uh, and until the end, the audio file until the end, and then do the next thing in the sequence. Whereas I want it to trigger and start then, but I might want other things to happen in the usual sequence. So I'm going to click on this little arrow down because that allows me to select uh, a different uh, a different sound. Now each sprite in Scratch has got their own assigned sounds and I can add to that. And I'm just going to choose Meow to start with because that's something you'll see straight away. I can also click on record and have fun recording my own sounds that I can trigger as well. But I'm going to start off with Meow. Okay, so when I press F arrow, it makes the Meow sound. Great, so I can have a lot of fun with that. Okay, but actually we want to make some music. We want to set up some repeat blocks as well. Um, I am going to change the, I'm going to set the pitch. So I'm going to create some different sounds uh, and I'm just going to duplicate this. I'm going to right click and duplicate this. And now I'm going to press the down arrow. Now when it says set pitch effect to 100, I'm going to set pitch effect to, uh, to 10 and we'll see what happens there. So we should hear a difference in the same, it's the same audio file, but what Scratch, the program Scratch is doing is it's just uh, changing the pitch of that audio file. So let's have a listen. I'm gonna press the up arrow. So that's gone quite high. I'm gonna play the down arrow. Okay, so you can set some different numbers. You can have a whole bunch of uh, different uh, inputs and you could have some different numbers with that same audio file and create some different pitches to work with. Maybe you could even make your own tune, who knows. Um, so now I've done that bit, what I need to do is create a drum beat for the background. Now, as we've said before, the drum beat wants to be a repeat block. I don't want to have to keep pressing the space bar to start those drums playing again. I just want them to keep going and going. So what I'm going to do is click on control and I could just click on have them going forever. Why not? or I could choose them to repeat for a certain amount of times before they stop. That's up to you. Let's this time choose forever. So everything inside this loop, when I press space bar, everything inside this little piece of uh, code here, this little little block here, will just keep happening forever. I'll go back to the beginning, cycle all the way down, go back to the beginning again, cycle all the way down, and it'll keep going until I press this red button and stop the program, okay? So uh, let's choose a sound to play to start with. Okay, now um, I'm going to choose to play a sound. Um, now, when you first start Scratch and you've got your Scratch sprite here, you won't be able to have access to all of the drum beats. So I'm going to show you now how I do that. At the top here, we have the Costumes tab where it has the costumes for this character, for this sprite. And here it has the Sounds tab which have all of the different sounds, the audio files which are assigned to this sprite as well. Now you can change those by clicking on this plus button. You can record some of your own, okay? Or you can um, you can choose a sound. And if you choose a sound, there are lots and lots of different sounds to choose from. I'm going to choose some drum sounds. So I'm going to go on percussion. Okay, so I'm going to choose a cymbal and I'm going to choose another one here, uh, percussion. Uh, hmm. I'm just 
going to choose a single sound because if I've got lots of drum beats that are already pre-programmed on the audio file, if I'm triggering them lots and lots and lots, then they might be at different rhythms and things. So I'm just going to stay at that same that single single beat to create my loop there. So I've created some of those, uh, and now I'm going to go back to code, and I should see those now appear in this list of sounds. So we said play the sound symbol crash. So when I press space. It's going to keep playing the cymbal crash. Are you ready? Okay, so it's a simple drum beat. Okay, um, but what I might want to do, um, I might, uh, oh, I'm going to just change that, sorry. Instead of play sound until done, I'm actually going to say start sound. The difference being that the play sound till done will wait the set amount of time till the end of the audio file before play, playing the next step in that sequence. Whereas I want to start this and then then wait a certain amount of time and then start another sound. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select that. I'm going to select my cymbal crash. And then I need to wait a certain amount of time. Okay. So that's also in control. And I'm going to click on wait. Now we can see what it sounds like with just one second. Okay, so uh, play the cymbal crash, wait one second, play the cymbal crash, wait one second. Um, but let's have our second sound in there. I'm going to start the sound. Okay. Okay. Oh. Let's, let's press play. Now I'm going to just add my, uh, I need to have a wait after that after the second sound as well. Let's have a look. So I'm going to put the kick drum there. Now when I press space bar, it should play the cymbal crash, wait one second, start the kick drum, wait one second, and then go back to the beginning again. As you can see, that's quite slow, so I might want to speed that up. So if I want to speed it up, I'm trying to make the, the waiting shorter, so the wait, the space is shorter, so that it plays it quicker. So I'm going to go for 0 0.5, which is half of one second. Let's try that now. Okay. So this is starting to work now. Fantastic. So let's have a look now at the task and some of the extra challenges for today. So let's recap. Our task is to use some different inputs to make some different sounds trigger, by which I mean click on the events bar, select some of the when I press buttons. So when I press the up arrow, when I press the letter T, then I want to trigger a different sound. So you can have a whole bunch of different sounds triggering when you press the keyboard. Okay, that's your first challenge. The next thing to do is to use a repeat block to make a drum loop. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be drums, but you could loop over some of the other instruments as well. So you're creating instrumental loop. You will need to include some of the wait buttons to make sure that the loop cycles through. You can choose repeat, or you can choose the forever block to make sure that it loops over and over. Now let's have a look at some of these extra challenges. Can you have more than one loop going at once? Can you add some animation to go with some sound as well? Let's see if we can explore that further. So if I wanted my uh, sprite to react to the sounds, the first place I might look is on the looks bar. So if I go onto this looks tab here, I can see some different simple lines of code that I can add, such as next costume. So let's have a look here. I've added next costume after I play the cymbal crash and next costume after I have the start kick drum. So what should happen is every time you hear a sound, he'll cycle to his next costume and look like he's walking at the same time. So let's see. <laughs> okay, of course, you could add other costumes on the costume tab or change things around there so that you're cycling through different costumes or switching to different costumes 
as the different sounds trigger. But let's have a look at what else we could do on this looks tab as well. I could also change some of the colors of the character or the sprite. I could change the size of the sprites as well. And this might be, work really well with uh, in time to the music. So here you can see that we've had a bit of a play around and um, as you can see I have played around with some of the visual effects. So now when I press the up arrow it's going to clear all graphical effects. It's going to set the size to 200% so you could change the size of Scratch. It's an easy thing to do um, with the music. I'm going to change the colour of Scratch. It's going to set a fish eye effect which sort of bulges his eye a little bit. Uh, and then the rest of it's already part of what we've already programmed. So if I press up, then he changes colour, his face gets a bit bold and he gets bigger. Um, when I press the down arrow, it clears all the current effects, like the fish eye effect and colour effect on him. Uh, and then it changes the fish eye effect, changes the colour, sets the size to 150%. So you can see, because I've set the colour effect to 100, it's gone blue. Uh, and then if I press the left arrow, I'm setting the size to 80%, uh, setting the pitch to minus 50% so this would be a lower sound. Um, and then I've also put an extra little repeat loop in. So it's fun to play with the repeat loops and some of these visual effects. So repeat loop 20 times, change the whirl effect by 25%. So instead of just changing the whole of Scratch to a whirl effect straight away, uh, what happens is it means it does a tiny amount 20 times over so the effect is this look press left and he sort of swirls around because he's swirling a tiny bit 25 times over so let's see all together um, how that works I'm going to press play There we go. Have a go, have a play around and see what you come up with.